Hi, uh, we continue here the analysis of the band diagram. So we just saw mm, the internal structure of band diagram. We saw mm, the different fascias that are uh, building the agate nodule, and we saw that uh, um, concentric banded is uh, diluted sometime, mm, producing a horizontal band. So uh, also we see the internal structure of uh, the band represent a sequence of the band. Okay, now we start to analyze the geometry of the band. It is quite rare that uh, the bands are uh, complete uh, all around. So concentric banding, also horizontal banding together, have um, some interruption. So there is two kinds of interruption. Uh, the more obvious is a large interruption of the bands, like in this case, but sometimes the, in the interruption are so small and they are called channels and uh, we will see that this channel are quite important in the uh, theory about uh, the uh, ge genesis of the act. So we differentiate an in interruption of the bands and uh, a connective channel. So connective channel is a channel where uh, there is a connection from inside and outside the, the, the nodule, the cavity but the interruption of the band is a wider uh, interruption and there is a better co connection. So we, we can imagine that sometimes the, the band are not complete, like in the case where we have calcedon concretion that uh, are uh, sticked just to one side, we, we can see that concretion like this one that we see in the chapter about the calcedon are more or less similar to this or this mm, body and also because they are uh, uh, covered by a thin band of quartz like in this case but mm, it's not necessary to, to call concretion just a normal band are often interrupted so if we imagine that water can enter uh, from interruption of the band is clear that a wider interruption have the property to give a better and faster drainage so the possibility the water to enter inside the cavity than a small and uh, narrow uh, channel connected channel uh, channel are not uh, absolutely necessary because water enter inside the, the cavity also for uh, using the porosity of the rock and uh, the porosity of the, the first chalcedony layer and the first band of chalcedony but is much uh, f slower uh, so uh, if there is an, an open space so it is more easy for the water to enter and uh, when water start to enter here, here there is no deposition, so without deposition mm, the band uh, continue to grow in the, the side, but this mm, opening, this door to access will remain open it because here the diluted solution that come from outside leave uh, this passage open. So it is not really a, a flow, a current, because there is very uh, little amount of water that enter in the, in the cavity. So there is not uh, uh, erosion in this uh, fluid movement, but the, the flow of new water that enter inside is more diluted. So you have the property to dilute the colloidal solution that is sticked on the wall of the cavity. So if we have an interruption of the band, this will remain opened if mm, is used for the water to enter inside. J 
in the moment that uh, the uh, opening is not more used so we it will be closed so we can um, analyze many sample and we arrive to the con conclusion that there is a relation between uh, interruption of the band and uh, horizontal banding always that we have horizontal banding inside a nodule we can uh, observe an interruption of the band in one side of the nodule and usually the interruption is on the side where the horizontal banding is here we have an interruption and in this side of the nodule we have the horizontal band in this case is a nodule that's just we see bef we saw before we s we need we see that the bands are horizontal to the right and more sticky and concentric banding to the left the same band grow uh, up here so we can imagine that the water that enter from the interruption of the band is res responsible to the dilution of this portion of the cavity but this dilution is not enough to dilute all the cavity so there is a partial dilution just in the right side of the node so we saw before that mm, the uh, horizontal banding are generated by the dripping of the uh, the concentric band is just deposit and uh, uh, in may in most of case we, we we don't saw the the stalactite because they are just dripped down so we, we saw just the uh, the flat band the, the the small lake at the base and uh, uh, so this is due because there is an, an open uh, an open door that give access to water so the, in the interruption of the bands is the responsible of that dilution okay if we have uh, um, a large interruption of the band that is also in this case we see the, the interruption of the band here is related to uh, horizontal banding in this side so if we have a large interruption of the band we have a much more efficient drainage to water going inside the cavity um, a smaller a smaller uh, interruption is less necessary also because if we are near the base is uh, fast is fast uh, to easy to, to close so this was at the beginning an interruption of the band but uh, uh, the the calcedony starts to become to to grow uh, in the side of the channel of the interruption and uh, it become narrow and narrow until it is uh, has been transformed in a channel here a very thin channel and then completely closed and um, this is more wide and more efficient drainage, drainage than this one so this remain uh, open and this closed so this is uh, the situation uh, the uh, typical situation where a lateral interruption of the band um, is responsible for horizontal banding then uh, uh, in the second stage we have uh, a concentric band banding on the top uh, and uh, the, the interruption of the band start to close so uh, connective channel are also con con a way for the water to enter but uh, because they are smaller they are less efficient but there is a transition between a large interruption of the band and a small interruption of the band like this one that can be like a big channel we can have a smaller channel or a very very thin channel in this case the the dilution is very efficient and we see that at the end we uh, we, we, we have crystallization of quartz 
uh, if the channel is smaller and um, it's quite difficult to have quars because uh, the dilution is more difficult because uh, just a little amount of water enter inside in this case there is um, the tendency of becoming narrow the channel so uh, the interruption mm, start uh, bigger and then become smaller and smaller because the cavity is smaller and smaller and less water enter inside so it's less necessary to have um, a, a channel that uh, um, help to, to enter the water inside uh, when the channel is very very small mm, is better structured um, so the, the band have a more complex structure around uh, the, the the flow of the, the input of water and uh, can remain like a very small tube but when they are very small they have a shorter life and can be close, closed uh, very rapidly so this is the the way as the channel grow so, uh, uh, here there is uh, a water flow and the channel uh, grow by uh, adding a, a bed uh, a bands uh, by bands like uh, uh, concentric bands but the bands are interrupted here like uh, we, the, the name say so the interruption means that here the, the flowing uh, make impossible the deposition so the water that arrive here that is not so strong to erosion this surface but um, is uh, more uh, diluted so there is a chemical erosion and uh, like a ripple this structure migrate for addition of more uh, more uh, bands so this line is uh, an erosional line and this uh, there is an addition of more calcedony but this is also an erosional line so um, the channel is a constructive structure not deformative this is very important because in, in many theory about the genesis of agate the the shape of this channel have confounded scientists uh, imagining that mm, there is a kind of deformation of the bands and the deformation look in some case to be uh, deformed from inside to outside so if we imagine this is a folding uh, we have to imagine an overpressure inside and some material that uh, has been pushed out for fold these bands and uh, really there is not deformation absolutely we know the bands are constituted partially by fibrous calcedony and quartz that are rigid not plastic so they cannot be deformed and um, all the uh, convolution of the band are constructive shape constructive structure and are uh, uh, mm, formed by accumulation of uh, bands by bands so this structure is never been deformed is born like this so the channels are mm, a constructive structure uh, used by water for uh, have a better access to the inside of the cavity okay um, where appear the interruption of the of the banding where appear the connective channel mm, in most case is possibly that um, the channel correspond to a fracture on in the host rock so we see here there is an interruption of the band this is an agate from scotland in in its in its host rock this is a basalt and we see a fracture filled by calcedony that was the access of the water inside the cavity so this is the more common case where the fracture uh, cross the cavity from lateral side can be a little bit more height more down but the more uh, often is the when the fracture arrive at the cavity 
from one side. So um, if um, the, the fracture is responsible for the um, faster entering of the water from its side, this is the place where the interruption of the band will be placed. So we can have an interruption or a channel, depending of on the size of the fracture, on the, uh, the quantity of water that enters from this point, but uh, we can never accumulate calcedon here because it is the only place where mm, the rapid uh, input of water will remove this calcedon. And uh, this dilution provoked by the uh, access of water from the fracture is responsible to the horizontal banding <coughs> that is uh, that we can say here. When this banding reach very near to the uh, axis to the to the channel, so is the, the moment when the uh, the channel is not more necessary. So uh, the the structure uh, change from uh, horizontal banding to concentric banding. So um, this is the way for to build an agate made half the inferior half of faces to uh, B, that is the uh, horizontal banding, and the upper part made of faces to C, that is the uh, concentric banding. So and this is the reason because mm, B lie under. C, just not bef because it's previous, mm, because we know that uh, the horizontal banding is the result of dilution of concentric banding, so conceptually the concentric banding arrived first, but actually the, this part of the agate is filled before this part of agate, so in terms of sequence we have Mm, before uh, a, a bigger amount of fatches to B and at the ending of the filling um, a bigger amount of fatches to C. So this is a very common uh, agate that we can see many uh, many nodules are half horizontal banded and half uh, concentric banded and is quite typical when there is the change from from horizontal to concentric to have a concave shape and uh, this concave shape is the first bands that are um, uh, deposited over the horizontal bands but they are concentric so in this case is a different cut from of the same agate so if we cut like this here we have a, a situation like this, so the uh, mm, the interruption of the band is in more or less in this position, but in another plane. And we see that uh, there is a change in crystallinity and in the color of the of the nodule. So the case of the nodule completely filled by horizontal banding is a quite rare case. And this is possible only if the fracture of access of water is located right in the highest point of the cut, like right here where uh, I put the, uh, the arrow. So this is because uh, a dilution can continue until the end. But in all other cases, when the, in, mm, the fracture is lateral, there is a moment then. Uh, the fracture become unuseful and uh, there is a change in the pattern of the banding from horizontal to concentric. Okay, we say that channels are mm. used by water for enter, but they are not necessary, not essential to have mm, the filling of solution inside of the cavity. So we have many cases, for example, in nodular agate formed in, in sedimentary rock, uh, there is no channel. For example, uh, dry agate from Montana 
I've never channel. I never saw a channel in a, in a dry head. Why? But this, is, this is clear because in sedimentary rock that are uh, clastic, uh, the porosity is very high. So it's the access of water inside the cavity is so easy that it's not necessary to have mm, to have a channel. The same happen in uh, vein agate when uh, the the access is so easy that mm, channels are not necessary. But um, in basaltic rock that are uh, glassy rock uh, and are impermeable, so if we have mm, uh, water uh, arrive inside um, the cavity very slowly by the porosity of the rock. So uh, if there is a, a fracture, the changing of the uh, velocity of water that enter inside is so strong that the, the, the fracture is important. But in, uh, in sedimentary rock, if there is a fracture, uh, the velocity of uh, input of water would be almost the same. So there is, is not important in this case. So there is nos nothing change. In other case, there is too many channels. Uh, like in this nodule, is a five centimeter nodule. I counted over 50 channels in, in this section. So I, um, I hypothesized more than 500 uh, small channel in the whole nodule. So this is uh, clearly not necessary to drain water in a so small mm, cavity. So probably they are a structure relict from the uh, globular uh, botroidal structure of the first Chalcedony layer. So um, the channel are not a structure formed by water but they are a structure formed by the uh, mm, accommodation of the structure of the botroidal calcedon. But when they exist, they are used from water to uh, have access to the cavity, and for this reason they survive for all uh, the time that uh, they are used. So uh, they are not a structure mm, formed by water. This is very important. Is another nodule with too much uh, <laughs> channel and too much uh, complex structure to be necessary. One channel is enough. Okay, this is uh, a curious structure. Um, Sometimes uh, an open of the banding, this is a wide open of the banding, um, starts to, to make it narrow so it transformed to uh, a channel smaller and smaller and then uh, the channel close at the moment then the channel close there is a quite uh, a change in, in the in the banding and um, the uh, crystallinity is more like the banded is more thin so this is uh, quite uh, easy to see in all the agate and uh, mm, the banding is more thin because the access of the water is more difficult. So less water is able to enter inside. But it's, it's, it's curious to see that this space uh, lived in the bottleneck of the channel can uh, be uh, used to form another agate, another banded uh, structure. So this is, uh, this is the uh, interruption of the banding that become narrow and then become a channel then is closed and this is the main agate but this is a secondary uh, concentric structure that is formed in the bottleneck and this is another structure like this and this is another structure like this it looks like mm, the, the agate have a secondary center but the, the real center of the agate is this one this one and this one. Okay. Uh, we change the theme. We we will mm, explain here uh, the crystallization domain. Uh, crystallization domain uh, is mm, 
a structure uh, formed because uh, we know that the globular chalcedony is plastic and is fit very well any curve of the cavity, any existing morphology inside the cavity. But on the other end, the uh, fibrous chalcedony um, is an association of parallel fiber each other. So this is hard, is solid, crystalline, and uh, they are not able to uh, to stay, to continue to stay parallel, parallel each, each other when the angle is so narrow. For example, in this case, we see that the angle is around 90 degree, so the the, the global chalcedony that is transparent have no problem. But here, when the white portion that is fibrous chalcedony uh, start to crystallize, we have a, a line. This is a joint dividing two crystallization domains, this one and this another. We have another joint here. So the joint is this line and this is a contact between two orientation of the fiber. When the orientation of the, uh, the fiber is broken in a point, this can continue until the center of, of the nodule or uh, can stop when the crystallinity change. For example, in this case, we see at the beginning there is a lot of globular chalcedony, so the, the bands are curved, but when it starts to be more white, in this case, we see that there is the beginning of formation of this um, joint between crystallization domains. So uh, we divide the agate in domain of different orientation of the fiber. So this is the crystallization domain are important to give a different appearance to, to the agate. If the fibrous chalcedony component is very high, like in Laguna Agate in Mexico, uh, the aspect of the band is mm, that of broken band. You see uh, what we call fortification agate. So we see that uh, the agate is, fortif is a fortification agate uh, with many, many uh, domain of crystallization. Uh, on the other hand, if the fibrochalcedony is low and the, the agate is, is made up mostly of mm, globular chalcedony, the bands are continuing, con continuous, and the curves are more smooth. So uh, there is a uniform, cu uniform curvature without crystallization domain. Maybe there is a, a joint here, uh, probably a joint here, but most of the band have a continuous curvature. So this kind of agate with this crystallization domain um, indicate a more crystalline uh, a mm, more crystallinity more high crystallinity because there is more fibrous uh, chalcedony than in this kind of fiber now we will talk a little bit about the color we we know that the color is just present in the globular chalcedony that that is the transparent stuff and is located in mm, color center. So there is um, chromophore ion of metallic, so like iron, that make a, a small reaction and make uh, uh, the production of uh, a mineral, uh, uh, hydrate mineral of like the moss, so, but is just a small particle. And uh, um, we make a dot with the color. This, the, sh the sh shape and size of this dot are very, very, very small. So um, we know that most of the impurity present on, on the wall of the cavity um, are consumed during the, the production of moss and plume and all the inclusion. So th a very small amount of pigment is sufficient to give color to an agate. We can see here that this portion that from far is yellow, I if we look at a uh, more uh, narrow distance, 
we see that uh, the yellow portion is uh, very, very small. So um, the color, uh, for example, this cabochon is a laguna with uh, l uh, many, many colors, wi with many O of colors. But if we uh, make a close up, we see that mm, really is just one color, is the red. So we see different color depending o on the amount and the concentration of the dot. This is the same that happened in the television when uh, the color is uh, done by a small dot of color. So this is another picture we just see before. So the <coughs> all the color is concentrated in the globular chalcedony and uh, in the fibrous almost nothing. Fibrous is usually white or just a little bit um, iron oxide uh, dye diet uh, and the quartz is usually transparent so all the uh, uh, the red dot the uh, color center are concentrated in the cl uh, globular calcedony like this one and this one so we can divide the color in two, two main group primary and secondary uh, primary means uh, that uh, the color is the remain of what was used for the growth of, of moss and uh, um, is uh, the ion chromophore ions are trapped inside the cavity the same that happened to the uh, silica that is trapped inside the cavity because uh, it enter with uh, water but the evaporation uh, bring out just the, the water living inside the big ions that are more difficult to be extracted from the colloidal solu solution. So they are mm, incompatible with the structure of cal the chalcedony until its concentration is too much high that they start to form the, the dots and give the color. So in the case of primary color the color is concentrated in the center of the banding and uh, the exterior part is more white or transparent. And this color appears uh, during the formation of the agate when the, mm, when the banding uh, was yet soft. Uh, but secondary color arrived after the solidifying of the agate um, by circulation of water in the in the soil all the secondary color mm, are uh, mm, around in, in the uh, outer edge of the agate and the center is uh, left white so there is the possibility that uh, there is a secondary color to an agate that have prima primary color so mm, this is for example this case where um, primary color are concentrated near the center and are in U or red and secondary color are concentrated uh, toward the edge and are in the U or green and this make the more mm, beautiful more colorful agate typically uh, horizontal banding have no color okay this is some case of primary color this is a laguna we see all around is transparent uh, all the color is starting from here and increase in in uh, color toward the center another laguna mm, start with low color and more dark more deep color are near the center this is a malawi agate sumatra all around are uh, transparent or white and we here other laguna this also at the beginning have some color but more deep and uh, important color are uh, near the center of the of the banding so we can try to study the behavior of the primary color so in this uh, koyamito agate we see that the first banding are transparent um, because the iron is incompatible and is accumulated inside the cavity 
until this point where the iron starts to give color to the bands and we have some yellow. The yellow increase uh, in color until this point and this here there is a band we have uh, made a close-up in this band mm, uh, iron oxide crystallite there is a small black line made of goethite uh, small point of goethite crystallization this black line is very very tiny but is uh, crystallized so that means the concentration of the iron was too high to leave it inside the chalcedony and it crystallizes as a separated mineral. Mm, at this point we have again white banding and uh, we start to have color by manganese. So the iron is uh, ended, is finished and we start to have manganese uh, that give color in the hue of uh, pink and uh, purple so we have this color increasing in depth until this black line the black line is a, a line of manganese oxide so this manganese oxide is a kind of psilomelan a mix of manganese minerals and um, represents the crystallization of the excess of manganese that was inside the nodule so the, the end of the cavity is practically transparent w we see uh, this dark blue but this is just the reflection of this black line so the this is practically transparent or uh, slightly uh, uh, blue like that is the real color of the calcedon so this is what happened to primary color that are accumulated inside um, the cavity until they are uh, um, they reach uh, a concentration that uh, permit to crystallize and uh, at this moment they are um, they are no more uh, this uh, chromophore inside of the cavity uh, secondary color we say that are uh, concentrated toward around toward the edge of the of the of the nodule this is a typical condor with a lot of red around mm, most of the color secondary are in the hue of red this is dry head this is aul in morocco also in the hue of, of red and orange this is uh, a nugget from china all secondary color patagonia lake superior kerushin this is a german nugget all uh, have the color concentrated toward the outside and uh, the inside are usually white or transparent a lot of white or transparent material so mm, how um, is the secondary coloration uh, there is many way but uh, usually the uh, the the color uh, arrive from uh, solution that come from outside and uh, so the coloration depend on, on the porosity so we can have different situation uh, the chromatography is when a portion of the agate is uh, colored by a different uh, color but crossing the, the band so the, the color is not continue around the band but change in one side that have uh, a different porosity then we can have um, color in uh, on fractures like uh, this kind of veil uh, also dendrite is a kind of secondary coloration and uh, also the veil can be uh, situated along the bands or along the the joint between uh, the domain of crystallization and uh, this is a, a special case uh, a kind of circle uh, in the center of the agate that arrive when the agate have a small portion of crystalline quartz in the middle we can check uh, more detail any of this process chromatography is depending on mm, the side that have the more easy uh, access to uh, oxidized water from uh, the external solution rich in iron uh, usually we are in a soil situation and there is a lot of water rich in iron so for example in this uh, uh, nodule 
the presence of the, uh, the channel is used uh, after its solidification for a better access of uh, water, of uh, oxygen that uh, give more ox oxidized color in this part. Also, for example, here there is a fracture and uh, this fracture divides the, the nodule in two different domains with different U of color. So probably there was a little bit difference in the solution in the two sides. Also, this is a change uh, chromatography, mm, uh, giving more oxidized color to the right and more reduced color to the left. This also all are color due to iron. And also in this case, we have a chromatography um, controlled by the bands but also uh, crossing the band. So uh, just this portion, the, the, this, this band is a limit for the water, but it cannot uh, continue until the end of this band. Uh, this is the central circle. Central circle arrive in many agates that have uh, at the center a small portion of quartz crystalline. This means that um, there is a, 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 a stagnation, starvation of water uh, in the, the porosity of this small portion that give mm, a, a, an halo of uh, different color in the central portion. These all are structure due to the presence of some water. They stay here when all the nodules dry this portion remain, remain wet for a, while, for a while. Also the joint between uh, crystallization domain uh, can be used for the water to enter and drain different color. We see here mm, there is a different secondary coloration along the, along the joint. Uh, also in this Alabama paint rock we can see that uh, the band are a, a path for the water to enter but also the uh, joint uh, of uh, crystallization domain make this uh, perpendicular uh, line, perpendicular to the band. Uh, also fractures are responsible for the movement of water inside. These are fractures sealed, so in, in, a, in a moment during mm, the history of the agate there was a fracturation, but then uh, the fracture have been sealed again and some um, uh, secondary coloration appear along the fracture. This is the same that happened in a Montana agate and we see for example in this nodule there is a very strong chromatography from yellow in this side to green so uh, the change of color is not respect respecting the banding. This also is a secondary coloration, but it, it uh, uh, depends uh, from the bands. So the, uh, the we see that the channel is always a point of better porosity, but the water uh, enters along the, along the bands. Uh, also in this case, uh, but uh, we, can, uh, the, uh, we can understand that this black coloration is due to manganese and this uh, red coloration is due to iron. And for close this, this uh, video, two optical phenomena that are present in banded agate. Uh, one is uh, parallax, uh, called also shadow, is mm, a, a phenomena that creating a diffraction grating that form a sort of shadow moving uh, in between the, the bands uh, with uh, eyes when you move the stones and um, it uh, happened in agate with very fine banding with alternation of uh, transparent and uh, white bands so it's necessary the presence of S2 uh, fibrous chalcedony bands uh, the other phenomenon is iris agate or iris agate and uh, is uh, uh, in transmitted light and is uh, 
this phenomenon appears just in agate made all of transparent chalcedon. So just S1 uh, bands of globular chalcedony, mm, almost without uh, white chalcedony. So in the case mm, of uh, transparent uh, chalcedony, if they are cut very thin in transmitted light, there is this iris effect with the presence of a rainbow. I, 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 this is a kind of agate um, very difficult to cut, but not so rare. 